Today's video is an introduction to geometry. We're starting a new unit, unit H, and this is going to be our introduction into the new unit. We're going to be covering all the vocabulary words. So it's going to be really important that you are taking good notes during this video. I will stop and tell you when to take notes, but if you don't have the notes in your notebook, this is kind of like your base where you're going to start and everything builds off of this first introduction. So here we go. All right, to start out, we're going to talk about some angles. Now, a lot of these vocabulary words you have learned in fourth and third grade, so they should be pretty familiar to you. Okay, so I'm actually going to start down here with the right angle. The right angle is an angle that measures exactly 90 degrees. So it usually has a box like right here in the corner. It is an angle that is exactly perpendicular. They cross at the exact um, 90 degree point. We have two other types of angles here, acute angles and obtuse angles. An acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. So if we imagine that we have our 90 degree angle right here, it is smaller than that 90 degrees. So it is acute. We also have obtuse angles, the opposite of acute angles. If we imagine we have our right angle right here, the obtuse angle is an angle that is more than 90 degrees, but it is less than 180. 180 would be a straight across line like this. All right, so now that we know a little bit about angles, we can talk about triangles. Triangles um, have three different classifications, and the different classifications rely on the sides and the angles. So this first triangle that we have here is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral. This is called an equilateral triangle because you can notice the little tick marks right here on the triangle. All of the sides are the same length, they're congruent, and all of the angle measurements are the same length. So it's all equal, equilateral. Next we have an isosceles triangle. This is isosceles. An isosceles triangle, it looks similar to an equilateral triangle, but it's a little bit more pinched up towards like this. In an isosceles triangle, two of the angles have the same measurements and one is a different measurement. And two of the sides are congruent, are they, the, they are the same length. So two angles are the same and two sides are the same, the other ones are not. And you can tell that the angle across from the sides are going to match. So that is an isosceles triangle. Finally, we have the oddball of the triangles. This is the scalene triangle. Scalene triangles have nothing in common. All of their angles are different and all of their sides are different lengths. So the, you can tell that it's a scalene triangle when it has no consistency, nothing the same. <clears throat> Alright, moving from three sides to four, an object or a shape with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Quad means four, so quadrilateral means that there are four sides. Make sure that you know a quadrilateral is a shape with four sides. So we have lots of different kinds of quadrilaterals here. We have, first of all, a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. We know that parallel means that they are exactly the same length apart and they go on forever. It only has one pair of parallel sides and that makes it a trapezoid. Please make sure that you're getting this vocabulary down in your notebook and that you're not just writing down the vocabulary word but you know what these words mean. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So that same word parallel, just like a trapezoid, it has these two top ones that are the same length apart, but also the sides are parallel. So they go on forever and they never touch. Parallel, par parallelogram has four sides and they're all parallel. 
parallelogram kind of looks like a slanted rectangle. Now next we have a rhombus. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four sides of equal length. It looks very similar to a parallelogram, but all four of the sides are equal. Think to yourself for a second, how can you tell in this drawing that all four sides are equal? There's a very, very telling sign in this picture. If you guess that it was these little tick marks, then you were correct. The little tick marks tell you that all four of these sides are equal. They all have the same length. A rhombus is kind of like a slanted square. Now, we mentioned rectangle and square, but what are the actual definitions for those? A rectangle is a, and actually, these have the wrong words in them. They shouldn't say parallelogram. What should they really say? They really should be saying quadrilateral. There we go, we fixed it now. They should all say quadrilateral. So a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. So remember we talked about right angles. Those are the angles where the corners are exactly perpendicular. They make that little box in the corner. A rectangle has four right angles. A rectangle usually has two sets of sides that have the same length. So that means these two sides will have the same length and these two sides will have the same length. But in a rectangle, obviously, some of the sides are shorter than the other. That's the opposite as in a square. A square is a quadrilateral with four sides of equal length and four right angles. So all the sides are the same length and it has four right angles. Really quickly, I want you to just be thinking about what's the difference between a square and a rectangle? And what's the difference between a rhombus and a parallelogram? A square and a rectangle have one major difference. The sides are not all the same length like in a square. In a parallelogram and a rhombus, it's almost the same thing. In a rhombus, all the sides are the same length and in a parallelogram, they're not. So parallelograms and rectangles are very similar and rhombuses and squares are very similar. All right, squares versus rectangles. This slide has a pencil on it because this is a very, very, very important slide. It's gonna be really, really crucial, crucial means important, that you know the difference between a rectangle and a square and you know the classification. So let me just read this to you for a minute. The definition of a rectangle, it is a quadrilateral with all four right with all four angles right angles. We know that. The definition for a square is a quadrilateral with all four angles, right angles, and all four sides the same length. We already knew that. From the definition of a rectangle, you can prove that the opposite sides are parallel and of the same length. A rectangle can be tall and thin, short and fat, or all the sides can have the same length. But in a square, it's a special kind of rectangle. It is one where all the sides have the same length. Thus, every square is a rectangle because it is a quadrilateral with all four angles right. However, not every rectangle is a square. To be a square, its sides must have the same length. This is a very important statement. Every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. Squares are special. To be a square, all the sides have to be the same length. So one, two, three, four. But in a rectangle, your sides could look like this, it could look like this, and it could even look like this. So every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. Squares are special. Please make sure that you have that statement written down in your notebook. That is so, so, so important to know. 
All right, think about it. I want you to just look at these um, five statements right here. And you need to think, is this statement below always, sometimes, or never true? We're gonna take these one at a time. So I want you to just, after I read it, just pause the video for a second. Figure out, is it an always statement? Is it a sometimes statement? Or is it a never true statement? All right, a rhombus is also a parallelogram. Always, sometimes, or never true. All right, next one. A rectangle is also a square. Always, sometimes, or never true. A square is also a parallelogram. Always, sometimes, or never true. A triangle is also a quadrilateral, always, sometimes, or never true. A quadrilateral is also a rectangle, always, sometimes, or never true. All right, so I have the correct answers here for you to check. Let's go through these really quickly. A rhombus is also a parallelogram. This is always true. A parallelogram is just a shape with four, with two parallel sides on one side and two parallel sides on one side. So a rhombus has both of those things, so that is always true. A rectangle is also a square. This is never true. Remember, a square is a special type of rectangle, so any old rectangle cannot be a square. A square is also a parallelogram. That is always true. Remember I just said parallelogram is a shape with two sets of parallel sides. Square definitely has those. A triangle is also a quadrilateral. That is never true. Quadrilateral means that it has four sides and a triangle only has three sides, so that's not true. And finally, a quadrilateral is also a rectangle. Well, that is sometimes true because a rectangle can sometimes be a quadrilateral, but not all quadrilaterals are rectangles. We also have trapezoids and parallelograms and rhombuses and squares. Okay, so now that we've been talking about different types of polygons or different types of shape, I just want to take a minute to just point out the different attributes or the different um, characteristics of a shape. So first of all, an attribute is a characteristic or something that we use to identify the shape. Okay. Now, there are three different attributes that we use when we look at shapes. These are sides, vertices, and angles. So obviously, I, th I think you can figure out what a side is. A side is this part right here on the shape. It is basically like the border or the outline of the shape. So this is the side. And then we have vertices. Vertices are the end points on the shape. So these are kind of like where the sides meet. These are called vertices or the vertex. This is where the sides meet. And then the angles are, it's like kind of like an elbow in between with the sides, like when the sides meet, it comes to a vertice, and then the inside of the vertice is called the angle. So it's the inner part of the vertex. Okay, now it's time to go show what you've learned. This has been a bunch of information, and you got some information in the during the day today in your lesson. Some of it may have been a review. Some of it you may have needed to refresh your memory. It is now time to go to Canvas and take your three-question quiz. Good luck.